Hello everyone, my name is Ritik. I'm an international student in Slovakia, Kosice. Uh, yeah, it, I have a Schengen visa, that's how I travel uh, around Europe in the Schengen countries. And uh, I'm from India, Bangalore. So this is my podcast about my cinematic trip to Italy. So all this started uh, with my interest in Erasmus. Uh, Erasmus is a program, for those of you who don't know, it's a program where you can go to another country and study for a semester or two. Or an Erasmus Plus is a program where you can go to another country for an internship. It can be from one month to like one year or something. So I chose the second one, Erasmus Plus, and this was in Italy. Genoa so this was after my second semester here I was uh, I was all packed up on the 15th of June but I had to be there on the 1st of July so after 15 days of restlessness insomnia excitement and expectations I finally got the chance to travel. So my mom sent me some some money. I get money from home, by the way. Uh, so yeah, I'm not financially independent yet. So she sent me like 200 euros just for the travel, but my flights and everything were booked. And I was all set. So I live in this city called Kosice and from Kosice I had to travel to Vienna right so Vienna is uh, in Austria and that's where my flight was so the the city I live in is called Kosice and there's a train from Kosice to Bratislava which is the capital Bratislava is another city which is the capital of Slovakia so I had to take a train which is like six to eight hours that reaches from Kosice to Bratislava. So I took a train at 4 p.m. reached there like at 10 and 11, 10 or 11 p.m. I walked around the city then I went to the Danube River. It's pretty nice there. Uh, it's, it's a very good view and it's a very good place to write your diary. So I was there and there was a group of uh, people like just drinking and like enjoying and stuff. So they were making some good jokes and I was like kind of laughing at it. So they looked at me and they kind of invited me to join them. And I joined, we started talking and they were like, we got to show you the nightlife of Bratislava. You know, they wanted to, they were very welcoming and nice, uh, which is superb and spontaneous. So we all uh, went pub crawling that night. Uh, pub crawling is basically going to different pubs and enjoying the pop culture of the city. So we went there after some education of uh, Slovak swear words and and some metal bands, Slovak metal bands and stuff and some expressions uh, and some drinks these guys dropped me at the bus station in Bratislava they were really punctual Uh, these guys might be heavy drinkers but they're very punctual that's a very good quality I, I look up to and then they dropped me at the bus station in Bratislava at 3 a.m. and I reached Vienna airport at 4 a.m. so now I'm hammered everything's funny everything's like really really funny right so when I go uh, I booked a flight from Lauda Motion Uh, I know it's kind of funny if you're an Indian uh, or Ryanair so it's like really cheap flights really good for students uh, so I got this flight for like what 12 euros or something 
from Vienna to Italy. Uh, so when I went there, they had this new rule going on where you had to like check in uh, online four hours before departure, which I didn't know. And they were like, if you want a boarding pass, you got to pay like 50 euros. I was like, okay, fine. I still had the 200. But then I took my wallet out just to realize I lost my 200 euros. Basically, that was everything I had for traveling. Now, the thing is, I can't call my friends because most of my friends were Erasmus friends in Kosice, so they all went back to their hometown. Uh, some international friends went back to their hometown. My Indian friends went back to India. My parents probably sleeping, so there's no point calling. And even if I could call them, uh, even if they can send money, it would take three days three days for bank transfer so it was pretty fucked up but since i was hammered it was all easy so i just went and sat in a chair like calming the fuck down and after 10 minutes like this this Aust uh, some guy from austria walks up to me he's an african uh so african australian i guess i can say that so he comes to me and he's like, uh, bro, I think I know you. Like, have you met before? Like, I think uh, we know each other. I'm like, dude, I, I, I have no idea. Maybe we met. And then he asked me if I was studying. He asked me if I was studying in Vienna. I was like, no, I, uh, I study in Kosice, Slovakia. And then we got a talking and this guy was like, uh, I told him my situation and this guy was like, it's just 50 bucks, I can pay for you. And that was like, that was like an offer I couldn't refuse because I really wanted to go to Italy and I didn't want some things to get ruined. So I was like, thank you very much. But asking for bank details is quite rude. So I asked him for his WhatsApp number. So next time I come to VN, I can like, uh buy him dinner or get, grab some beers with him like pay for it i mean and i took his whatsapp this guy was like the savior and once this happened i was in the queue quite hammered everything was funny to me but i was in a hurry so i had like 30 minutes time to like clear this line and go for the customs so i was really impatient like kicking in the air and like tapping my my legs and stuff being really impatient you know and there's this girl austrian beautiful girl behind me and she's she's pretty calm you know and she's laughing at everything i do i'm like okay what's going on we looked at each other and she's like why are you so why are you so uh, impatient and i'm like i have 30 minutes to get to the gates you know and she was like uh, i have 20 minutes and she was standing behind me so we both started talking i thought she was french so i was like are you french and she took that as a compliment for something some reason i don't know and then we were talking and it it somehow became flirting in the queue and people are like kind of looking at us some people are smiling but some people are still judging and i don't really give a shit about that anyway and that line didn't feel so big at all then i got my boarding pass somehow i got on the flight and then i realized you know there was a 99 percent of a chance where i had to go back which i still didn't have the money for uh, but it was like one percent uh, one percent of probability that i'd actually get on a plane to italy uh, due to the the situation what happened and when i got in the flight i had this feeling that you know you just have to like dream and things happen something like that some some kind of belief you know like the book secret kind of feeling and then finally i make it to italy 
Now, most of them speak Italian. And I'm the only moron speaking English. Oh, but their ba- language is, like, really beautiful. So, you're, like, you really, like, you don't care what they're saying because it sounds so musical. And, and you kind of like it anyway. So, now, I'm in the airport, right? And uh, in the airport, what happens is I somehow get the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then I call my parents and tell them that I have to, uh, I need money, like, you know, because I have to go all the way to Genoa and I'm still in Bergamo and they were like, we can transfer it, but it'll take two, three days, which is quite fucked up, you know, and then I called some of my friends in India. I told them if I asked them if they can send me some money not happening Uh, so I was sitting outside the airport and I was thinking why don't I hitchhike you know hitchhiking would be fun even though it's risky but it's kind of fun like foreign language getting foreign place it would be really nice you know it would be like a drive a road trip I didn't pay for something like that but it's not about money but yeah I'm just saying and what happened was I was just sitting there because I didn't know where to hitchhike because clearly there was no place for pedestrians Um, and after a while like two hours uh, one hour of overthinking and one hour of writing my uh, diary one guy walks up to me and he looked Indian he asks me if I'm Bangladeshi I'm like no I'm Indian and he asked me if he speaks if I speak Bengali. I was like, no, I don't understand. I would try to, but no. And then we both started talking. He told me how he came to Italy and started walking. He knows Italian as well, which was a plus point. So this guy was like, there's a Western Union, and it's like five bus stops from here, uh, and th- there's an Indian street. So in this Indian street, there's like. A shop where there's a Western Union and you can probably get your money transferred there so I was like oh that would be great can I walk from here he's like no dude it's it's uh, it's a long distance you know and then I'm like okay fine so what he does he gets me a bus ticket oh, such a sweet guy he gets me a bus ticket and he tells me where to go and which bus to take so I took this bus and I went to this Indian street he was talking about I went to the street and there's like so many uh, there were grocery shop uh, shops uh, Indian Chinese and everything I finally find the Western Union I'm standing outside Western Union I asked some random guy for Wi-Fi and I called my friends in Bangalore and somehow asked them to transfer money through Western Union. They went to three Western Unions in Bangalore. And you know the traffic in Bangalore. For people who don't know, it's crazy. You think Istanbul has bad traffic? Come to India, come to Bangalore. You'll discover. <laughs> and <laughs> what happens there is that they went there to three different Western Unions and all the three didn't have a sending option you know so when i walked into this western union uh, there was this guy who who was there and i'm like i was like uh it's really nice to see uh an indian in every corner of the world you know and this guy goes like i'm a pakistani i'm like oh shit, i fucked up you know <laughs> but i have nothing against anybody to be honest uh, but that was quite fucked up so this guy hated me even more and he was like um, if you want some help just go to the other stores go to the indian stores you know i w- because i asked him if i can charge my phone like it was on three percent and my stress levels uh, stress levels were like 300 percent so there was this barber shop indian barber shop and there was a restaurant indian restaurant next to each other right 
So I went to the barber shop and then I asked him if I can charge my phone. So this guy asks me if I'm a new student in Bergamo or like if I'm if I'm working or something. I tell him no 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 I'm just like traveling I have an internship in Italy and stuff. And then we start talking and even the restaurant owner is in the barber shop like you know. They are like a f- a group of friends and stuff. So they were talking and I was telling them that uh, about my life in Kosice how I'm I mean I'm a DJ here so I was just explaining I'm a DJ and an ESN member and things like this. So after a while like they were like what about western union and then I told them this was the situation. Uh I asked them do you know some place where I can hitchhike you know uh, and can I get a cardboard where I can ride Genoa and you know go they were like no 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 it's it's better if you take a train we'll get you a train ticket i asked them for the uh for the bank details but they were not ready to give it and uh this restaurant owner was like did you eat something i was like no dude but it's okay i'm i'm pretty cool you know and this guy calls me to his restaurant and makes me proper chicken biryani and then there's jalebi not that i ever liked it but ah it felt like pre- pretty indian food like you know really good and it's a favor i can never forget and he was like dua old me dua o me yaad rakhna means uh, remember me in your prayers or some prayers so i i don't speak good urdu or, or like hindi but i understand uh, because i come from a country where i mean not need to but you would <sighs> and then this guy drives me to the airport on a scooter and sorry not airport railway station in bergamo and he tells me that i can buy you a ticket to genoa and uh, from genoa you can go to your internship you know now finally he buys me a ticket and i'm like i'm really grateful for this person i want to come back to bergamo and like pay them back either by money or just buy them some gifts or something that was my plan and what happened was uh, he booked the train and and then he gave me 20 euros more on that and he was like uh eat something in the evening you know uh it's it's really weird because as an indian i'm going to be completely honest people indians don't like other indians abroad but when like usually when you're looking for help indians are always quite available you know the hospitality stays even if you're outside and it, it was really good now i got inside the train i got a nice window seat so we were traveling from bergamo to milano and then from milano another train to genoa now this train is beautiful it the journey is beautiful i have my i have my journal i have a window seat and i have i have a view and this view is amazing like you know i'm just looking at this view like i'm looking at a movie or something like some artsy movie so i'm in this feeling right like as if i'm in a movie and what happens this guy with a very beautiful voice starts singing who's sitting like uh one compartment not compartment like uh one seat behind me uh facing the other side so he's singing and he's singing beautiful songs and he started singing get lucky right it's one daft punk is one of my favorites so he started singing get lucky and he started singing get lucky in italian first of all italian is very beautiful it's it's a very beautiful language it's it sounds like music and then 
this song is even more beautiful so and this guy he was like really really good at it so when he was singing the song and i could see the view from uh, the window in the train while i could also see my reflection you know you can see both it was you know what i mean right you can see your reflection on the window and what's outside the window so it's going together and it, it was like a proper cinematic effect in real life and i i after he finished singing i met him and then i found out about his story that he sings uh, in sings in so many places he just sings whenever he feels like it and uh, the audience just the the audience just uh, are made up in the situation like not made up are made in the situation uh, i don't know the exact word i know i studied in icsc but i'm not shashita sir so uh, yeah sorry about that so like i was talking to him and he he knew some english and you know i asked him some songs uh, and he was singing it was quite fun then then i joined those guys and there were like four people uh, the others didn't speak english but they were trying to communicate uh, there was a huge language barrier and i didn't know uh, even even like one percent of italian i did and then we traveled all the way we traveled all the way to genoa now genoa is this beautiful city where where it's next to the sea or the ocean like and it's just really beautiful the the railway station like the train connections uh, the train goes parallel to the sea so you can like imagine the view it's amazing now i call my hr my hr and i say that uh, i'm in genoa uh, how can i come to the place the the venue the venue like the the internship place you know so she's like you have to come to kiavari from genoa which is another one hour uh, train you know and then my phone was again almost about to die of charge and there was this uh train from genoa to kiavari in like 2 minutes i went i somehow translated it and i got a ticket and i ran to the train station like the platform and i got this train now i'm sitting in this train and and like looking at the view like the ocean not no the sea see i think it's the sea so i was looking at the sea and it's it's blue as fuck it's so beautiful and we are going parallel to it and now this woman with dreadlocks and tattoos come and sit there comes and sits uh, opposite to me and uh, she knows some english so she started telling about uh she started talking about cinque terre cinque terre is this place called cinque means five terre means lands or villages uh no i think it's lands so cinque terre is like five villages which is like really famous uh in liguria so it's like five villages which is like really really artsy so she was talking about that she was talking about the italian culture uh how things are and about the food you know so many things uh, i i didn't even feel the one hour journey and this conversation was was really amazing and this is what i look forward to like because uh, that's what i like you know exchanging things exchanging views and perspectives and maybe even say something offensive but and finding out why it's offensive rather than not saying anything then i reached kiavari now i reached kiavari at 6:10 i call my hr again and i'm like i'm in kiavari 
uh, thank god this guy gave me the 20 euros i could book another train for 10 euros now she's like you got to take a bus from kiavari saying right so the bus stop is there and she tells me that there's a last bus at 6:15 to towards santo stefano and i have to get down somewhere in in the middle now i was like okay fine i started running i got outside i ran across the the road and then i just realized i missed the bus the bus number 11 uh i got the ticket by them but i missed the bus and then i walked back towards the train station and then there's another bus number 11 going towards the other direction apparently that's the bus which goes towards the hills and i missed the bus which was going away from the hills and i was like oh god this is like a miracle you know and I got inside the bus and there was this pretty old lady I think she was around 48 50 and she was very kind you know she was really kind and she started talking to me in Italian she was like tu to ben um come stai and all this you know I was I I I you know when I went there I actually didn't know what it means so it was like it was like uh, i was trying to communicate but all all that was there was hand gestures so i called my hr and i told her that i'm in this bus tell me the name of the bus stop and she's like uh, is there someone sitting next to you i was like yeah there's this lady who's talking in italian but i don't understand anything uh she was like you can give the phone to her and i can explain it to her so i gave the phone to her uh, and she explained uh, where or she told her where i should get down and she was like uh, bene bene and she cut the call and she was like um, she was trying to tell me where to get down but in italian and i couldn't understand one bit i should have learned and then she spoke to the driver she pointed at me and both of them smiled and yeah and i was just going and she had to get down after a while you know she was smiling one hearty smile and she was like three stops or something like three stops uh she meant three stops but that's all i know and she got down so i'm waiting for this three stops right i'm waiting and waiting and waiting and then this bus driver goes to the top of the hill and this guy goes to the top of the hill and i'm supposed to get down in the middle so this guy didn't stop at the bus stop because you got to press a button so i didn't know about this button and it was quite horrible and then this guy looks at me and he realizes that such an honor like i mean it was such a nice gesture like i really uh loved it you know like this 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 is what i like and and i think uh, media and stuff it shows the world to be more dangerous than than it actually is it highlights the ne- 20% of negative and 80% of the good things uh and that's why i would always promote traveling or living in a foreign country and then i go back to this place my hr comes in the car and she picks me up she takes me to the to the office or the place the accommodation and then there they make like lasagna tiramisu 
and stuff like yeah this was quite a journey i hope you guys liked it uh, if it was slow or boring i don't know what how you find it i think it was lengthy it's 30 fucking minutes but i'm sure my next podcast is not going to be that that uh, long i'll try to shorten things up so this is my story and i actually kind of named it instincts cuz cuz uh yeah it was it was all about instincts you know just following the lead like just having the thought and just doing it not overthinking about the fact that what you're supposed to do and stuff so then i went there i was i was still not excited like exhausted i was still excited because it's been a great journey and it was all about the journey you know and the thing is you have these dreams like i have to go to italy i have to go to italy i have to go to france i have, go, I have to go to spain you have these dreams and you have these dreams for like 2 3 years or even 5 years 10 years and when you actually get to the dream the dream just stays with you for 2 3 days you know and then it's like reality and yeah that's pretty much it so guys i hope you could subscribe i hope you subscribe share it to your friends if you resonate with it and uh, i i would really appreciate it if you had some feedback because this is my first ever podcast thank you so much for having me thank you